Cheese. Cheese. Jeff and Rhonda Locker, they've been living here for at least 30 years. But at some point in the late 90s, there was a gas company re-stimulating a well out behind their house. Rhonda was out doing the wash, and the wash went black. They knew they had a small problem with the water. And there isn't a laundromat for miles. All of a sudden, the washing machine plugged up, and the water that came out and flooded the back uh, where the washing machine is was, was pure black, black complete black. Mm -hmm. And of course, at that time, I went out and stopped Pumper when he came through the yard and, and asked him what he'd done to our water. And he says, well, we didn't do anything to it. In pursuing it further, I finally got water samples, and that's when we found out the water was, was totally unfit for, for consumption. That fast. Yeah, it was, it was just immediate. <laughs> this is about right for a cool day. Now, can we get together? Come on. The lockers threatened the gas company with a lawsuit. They settled for $21,000 to put in a reverse osmosis filtration system. This is the well that was on the property when we bought it. Uh -huh. We're still using it, but it's, it's the one that went bad. Jeff and Rhonda Locker had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. The day that I signed it, I even said to him, I just want you to know I may sign this, but if anyone asks me, I will not lie. Now, they're so frustrated that they're breaking their silence. This is our system. It pumps out of there, it pumps through the softener, it pumps through there, and it fills this 500-gallon tank. This, it's just a centrifugal pump. It goes through a real fine, I call it a filter, it's more like a membrane. We were actually drinking it for a while. But four and a half years ago, Rhonda got really sick with a, a extreme neuropathy and, oh, and is in a lot of pain. Oh, she God. just <laughs> faded it's fast and then same. had the bone pain and, and she's been through spinal taps and everything to try to find a cause. Jeff and Rhonda Locker found out that a reverse osmosis unit won't filter out glycol ethers. Like all ethers eat the membranes inside of the filters. We don't drink it anymore. Yeah. We haul our water and, and we... Um, Tell me about hauling the water. Where are you getting from and how does it work? <laughs> Walmart. Buy it. Yeah. <laughs> like Jeff and Rhonda Locker, after a nearby frack job, Lewis Meek's water went bad. Started smelling like gas. See, 2004, they drilled this well right over here. Uh -huh. I don't know if you can see from here. It's five... Numerous water tests turned up various forms of hydrocarbons and glycol ethers. In Canna, the company doing the fracking claimed no responsibility. With his back against the wall, Lewis had no alternative but to try to drill a new water well on his property. From 180, 160, you could smell gas. And he went in there and we got to 240. And when we put that joint on and started to try to blow it out, well up, it came at us. Natural gas exploded out of Lewis Meeks's water well for over three days. The Department of Homeland Security reported that over three million cubic feet of natural gas escaped into the atmosphere. Lewis had to get an injunction from a judge to get in Canada to cement the well to stop the flow and to provide him with a replacement water source. The big green building next to Lewis's house contains two cisterns that in Canada fills up twice a week. I can show you the water. So this, these, are, these are two big water tanks yep. that they're, they're filling up for you. Why are they bringing it? <laughs> Tell me. If nothing's wrong, why are they bringing it? So you actually hired a hydrogeologist to, to yep. figure out what was going on around here. Yep. And what did he say? He said that they got everything intermingled. When they, when they do anything like frack it, they're going to intermingle everything. You can already see the... You're going to see little pearls of stuff come out of it, uh -huh. like oil. I just already saw it when over here. And the water that comes out of Lewis Meek's original well is only good for some bizarre science experiments and brain-altering recreational activities. Oh, man. <coughs> Tell me you drink that. No way. Tell me there ain't nothing wrong with this water. It smelled like turpentine. That chemical smell that goes straight to your head and gets you dizzy almost immediately. Here's the thing, you know, I think it's a criminal. What would happen if I took some chemicals like I got and took them to, like, the big bossy in Canada and dumped them in as well? Yeah. They'd have me in the pen so fast my head would spin. For sure. But look, if they can come out here and do whatever they want to. And they don't even have to report it and tell us what they're putting in there. The whole, the whole concept of democracy and, and looking out for the little guy is does not apply here. Exactly. It, it and I'll tell not... you, I ain't, I ain't not lying. I've never seen such lying, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I mean, their word ain't no good. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, and we was all raised that way. Mm -hmm. You know, if your word ain't no good, you ain't no good. Mm -hmm. And you talk to these, these are grown men lying to you. Right. For what? For the money. And that's it. When we had ours tested with the, them to have tested and they found glycol in it, it cost us $4,400. Yeah, for what? Something is burning on the surface. It's like a plastic. Glycol ethers are odorless, colorless, and are a liquid chemical component of plastic. Something definitely in it. When Lewis took a blowtorch to his water, I think we found a cheaper way of testing for glycol ethers. Either that, or a secret Wyoming recipe for homemade plastic. Okay.